This is my approach to the abdominal radiograph. The main question you're trying to answer in this study is, is the bowel gas pattern normal? This is an example here of a normal abdominal radiograph with a normal bowel gas pattern. The small bowel is often located centrally. These are small bowel loops right here. On the periphery here, you have the large bowel. This is colon here. You have loops of colon there. You get some of the sigmoid colon there. I'm gonna show you now examples of large and small bowel obstructions. This is an example of a small bowel obstruction. Notice the distended loops of bowel that are located predominantly centrally within the abdomen. And pay attention to these loops, which I'm circling here. You see these discrete lines right here. These are what we call air fluid levels. When you have a small bowel obstruction, here are some more here, you get these air fluid levels where there's essentially layering fluid within the obstructed loops of bowel. I'm gonna contrast the small bowel obstruction with a large bowel obstruction. Notice again, you have gaseous distension of multiple bowel loops. And the way to tell small from large bowel, first of all, small bowel is located centrally and we do have some distended small bowel loops here. But with the colon, you see these hostile markings. And that's what I'm kind of outlining here see some of them here. These are characteristic of the colon. So if you see the hostile markings on a dilated loop of bowel, that is dilated colon. So in this case, there is a large bowel obstruction. We also have secondary dilation of these small bowel loops, which you see centrally, but these peripheral bowel loops are dilated colon. After looking at the bowel gas pattern, I then look at everything else. One of the main things being the bones. You've got the pelvis, lumbar spine, sacrum, ribs, a little bit of hips, and then I take a look at the pubic symphysis as well. After looking at the bones, I look for calcifications. Sometimes you can catch renal stones in the areas of the kidneys or along the ureters on the way down to the bladder. In this case, I do not see that. And then just kind of get a general idea of the distribution of the bowel loops. Sometimes there can be a large mass that pushes the bowel loops a certain way. Other times you can see the bowel loops are all kind of concentrated centrally because there is ascites. Always keep in mind pneumoperitoneum or evidence of free air. That's one of the big things you don't want to miss on a radiograph if you can catch it. And that is my approach to the abdominal radiograph.